Welcome to today's 3D print channel update, little things I'm working on, stuff like that. Stay tuned. Alrighty, so I keep getting this question over and over again, so I want to get this over with really quick. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, is it safe to get the EU version or the US version of a printer? 99.9% .9 of the time, it does not matter. The only difference between the EU printer and the US printer is this power cable. So if you buy the US printer, you get this power cable, US plug with a C13 end. If you buy the EU printer, you get this power cable with that plug and a C13 end. It is the exact same cable with just a different plug on it. There's no other difference between the two. So if you can get the EU version for significantly cheaper than the US version, get the US version and simply replace this $3 cable with this $3 cable, which you've probably already got a hundred of lying around your house if you have computers at all. Every single desktop computer you've ever had has one of these. Every laser printer, every pretty much everything in your house is going to have probably one of these cables. You probably have 20 or 30 of them lying around your house. Just grab one of these, swap it. Just make sure the switch says 110 on the printer. That's it. I will soon be installing the Micro Swiss 300 degree hot ends on my printers. I was going to install these on the CR10s and then I realized I'd be better off installing these on the Enders. Well, maybe one of them on the CR10 and one of them on an Ender. Because the Ender is the printer that's going to be doing all of my little engineering prints. My little parts and stuff like that. And it has the ultra high resolution. So when I start printing with polycarbonate and nylon, I'm not going to be making 12 inch prints. I'm going to be making little prints, structural prints, engineering prints. You know, useful objects. You know, ends for my rockets, launch lugs motor casings, weird things like that, whatever I can figure out to use nylon and polycarbonate for. So I'll put these things on my ender. I have since upgraded my design for a hot end replacement so that it will now fit the Micro Swiss um, replacement. So this will fit the stock or the Micro Swiss with a 30 millimeter fan and it has two mounting plates for cooling fans because when I made my print I noticed that especially when I tried to go too fast one side of the print was spectacular while the other side was a little lacking in the cooling department so now you can put two fans which will also allow you to run the fans at say 50 or 60 percent so about the same air but coming from both sides and less noisy which i like um, if anyone is interested i have two printers for sale I have Little Critter 1, that Ender 2 that I fully modded out. It has everything. It has this upgraded hot end with a single fan, um, A2 hardened steel nozzle, that was 25 bucks all by itself, um, PEI print bed, um, the fan is routed to the power board so it's powered normally, it's got the replacement springs, so I got rid of the, the stock springs it comes with and it has the replacement springs. It's fully upgraded, fully modded, it's fully assembled, the only thing you have to do is screw the spool holder on it. It's leveled, but I don't know if that'll survive shipping. Shipping's about $27 to $47, depending on if you want regular mail or priority mail. Regular mail is probably three or four days, and priority mail would be two days. Uh, $325. Bucks. First person who wants it can have it. Um, I also have a brand new in the box, MakerBox Mini. Uh, that was my very first printer, and mine failed. Uh, they sent me a brand new one with the um, plus module nozzle upgrade. I never even opened it. Anybody wants it, make me an offer. A couple things that I found this week that I thought you guys might find interesting. I found this cool deal. It's like 12 or 13 bucks for a vernier caliper. It's plastic. It's not the greatest vernier caliper in the world, but it works fine for what we're going to use it for. And what I love most of all, big giant screen. I really love the big screen. That's a, a, a turn on for me. Is that I like that big screen. What I don't like is that um, you can turn it on and off with an on off button, and you can switch between millimeter, inches, and whatever F is. You can zero it. Um, but also moving it turns it on. It's a little annoying because it might turn on in your bag. So I'm going to design a case for this. Something else I found cool. I don't know if it's any good yet. Well, I know it's going to be good, but I don't know if it's good for my purposes. Mobius has a new camera, the Mobius Mini. This thing is pretty cool. Very, very small. 
I've been using these cameras for years. These are what I put on my rockets. So I mount these cameras with keychain cameras to my rockets. And the Mobius is one of my favorites. So this is the Mobius Mini. As you can see, it is super tiny. Here's it next to a Benchy. It's about the same size as the Benchy. It's supposed to be able to do both time-lapse pictures and time-lapse video. If it does time-lapse video, this should be light enough for me to mount on an arm on the moving print bed so that the camera will move with the print as it's printing. So you won't get that you know, like this. <laughs> It'll be the camera moving with the print. So I think this will be light enough not to cause any artifacts in the print from its mass wiggling around on the end of an arm. So I'm going to test that and get back to you guys on what I think of that. And they're pretty cheap. It's like $76 time shipped. And it's a, a nice camera. Mobius cameras are the best. Um, my favorites for the micro cameras. Um, it'll also act as a dash cam. Although I wouldn't use it for that. Too nice. Um, 1080p 60, 720p 120 frames per second, and 480p 240 frames per second, which is very cool. Um, well, here's some sample prints from that Ender, so you can see the kind of quality you'll be getting. That's a vase print. This is your little Marvin. I'll have some pictures at the end of the video, too. And here is your Benji. Why aren't I getting enough light here? There should be plenty of light. There we go. That was, this actually came out. There's actually one of these still on the print bed. Assuming it stays intact for shipment. The last one that printed is still sitting on the print bed. A um, couple of interesting prints that I found recently. First of all, I printed another Joel bot in my 3D Fuel Autumn color. I love that color. It's my favorite color. I have like... Um, I think five kilograms of this, or no, 25 pounds of this. I have 25 pounds of this. I love that plastic, it's, it's amazing. It's a limited edition, so I don't want to get a chance. I'll have um, filament reviews coming up soon. I have some new filaments from Toner Plastics that I'm looking at. They have a couple of cool blue colors that I like. Um, also, I got some filamentum colors. These things are amazing. They're very, very expensive, but they're very pretty. I finally got some Polyalchemy Elixir. This is Night Sky. Stunning color, but like all Ultra PLA, Silky PLAs, poor layer bonding. I could tear this thing apart very easily. In fact, I broke it taking it off the print bed. I think I'm going to print these on my i3 Mega from now on because the i3 Mega has nearly ender quality and it has the auto release print bed. So you don't have to pry them off the print bed. I also got the total pack filament in, very nicely packaged. They have their own little custom packaging and good sealed up rolls of filament, vacuum sealed, and I am getting excellent prints from it. For example, here is another spool holder for the i3 Mega. That's going to be part of a giveaway soon. I modified it so it prints cleanly and a little stronger but it's fantastic, it's good filament. I wish I ordered 20 kilograms. I'm kind of sad I don't order 10, because <laughs> it'll probably be a long time before somebody else puts decent filament up to sale for $7 a kilogram. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Uh, the, I'm gonna make a lot of nose cones out of that. <laughs> um, what else? I guess that's basically it for today's video. Uh, oh, I almost forgot. I got the new, the JG Aurora A5 print beds, the 310 by 310. So this is that i3 Mega style print surface, but it sticks a little better than the i3 Mega, so it doesn't auto release, which is good for um, if you have a power off resume situation, because uh, the i3 Mega will pop off and you can't resume. This holds a little bit better, but still releases very easily relative to other print surfaces and requires nothing. You don't have to do anything to it. No spray, no tape, no glue. So I'm going to be playing with this on one of my CR10s and I'll let you guys know how good it is. The other cool thing is, if this proves to work very well and if it proves to be very flat, it's got adhesive on the back, which means I can stick this directly to the aluminum bed. No more binder clips. That would be nice. Um, I'm going to see what they'll sell these for. I paid $40 a piece plus shipping. It was 108 bucks for two of them. But I realized they sent me the heat beds too, which I really don't need. But 
that gave me an idea. It's a 24 volt heat bed and it has no problems hitting 100 C. So I'm wondering, could I mount a second power supply in the CR10 since it already has a MOSFET to control whether the power is on or off and put a 24 volt heat bed on the CR10? That's interesting. I mean, this, this is not exactly a super thick plate, but combined with this, it's more than thick enough. I don't know. That's an idea I might consider trying to do. We'll see. Um, I'm also wondering, could I put a 24 volt power supply It is recording. I thought I wasn't recording all this time. <laughs> could I put a 24 volt power supply in the um, CR10? Replace the 12 volt power supply and then simply use a 24 12 volt step down for all the 12 volt components. I wonder if that would work. Then I wouldn't have to have two power supplies. If any of you guys know about this kind of stuff, let me know if that's feasible, how feasible that is. Would I have to replace the heater cartridge as well, or does it work off 12 24 volt as well? Uh, this 40 watts is a lot of power, relatively speaking. But those are the only two high drain components. Everything else is low drain. I, got, I already have a 24 12 volt down converter I got for the, um, to allow me to put quiet fans in the TiVo Tornado, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> Um, but that might be an interesting option to get faster heating on the CR-10, so we shall see. Um, I'll have some test prints with polyalkylene filaments. Here's some, here's their nightshade, and here's the night sky. Very pretty. I broke both of them getting them off the print bed. Just cracked them. But, um, very pretty filaments very delicate filaments and they also had clearance on the pink so I got the, the polyalchemy pink filament as well so I will play with that and I have learned that thin prints single wall prints work really really well with the transparent filaments Oh, I really like doing this. This is the Zyro Transparent Twinkling. These look amazing. Every one of them. Every single transparent filament that I've done as a single wall base print has come out simply stunning. I mean, really, really, really pretty. So I'm going to be doing more of that kind of stuff with these translucent, transparent, and twinkling filaments because they came out really, really nice. That's it for today. You guys enjoy. I'm going to try to get on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule for videos. We'll see. Um, and go from there. You guys have a great day.